If you can't see it, you might have to look a little closer. Like really close. In the middle of NATO Parkway where it meets up with Taylor Street sits the world's smallest park in the heart of Oregon's biggest city. It's a very prestigious spot. It's very well known for how small it is. This is Daniel Meisner. He's with Urban Forestry now, but for four years, Millands Park was his to take care of. I really view it kind of as an honor to, to be able to maintain it and have that be part of my legacy with Portland Parks. But before Millands Park became a city-owned park, it was just a hole in the middle of the street. It was really just meant to be a power pole that was here in the middle of the road. Enter Dick Fagan with the Oregon Journal, a general news reporter and former editor of the paper. On January 28, 1947, he started writing a column. He called it Mill Ends. His column was consisted of a lot of, shall we say, odds and ends. The story goes that Fagan was looking out his second story office window at the journal building and noticed the hole filled with weeds. Uh, he just kept looking at that day in and day out. He says, something's got to be done here. This isn't right. And this is where the story takes a whimsical turn. Fagan reportedly saw a leprechaun digging in that hole, and after he caught it, was granted three wishes, one of them being to have his own park. He just never said how big the park should be. So the leprechaun gave him the weed-filled hole. He named it Millens Park and gave it the title himself, the world's smallest park. Spruce it up with a couple rose bushes, yes. a few marigolds around. From left to right is Carolyn, Bill, and Pat, three of Dick Fagan's children. To me, he was a fairly quiet person. While the park started as just a planted piece of dirt, it was in 1954 as Portland tried to cement its reputation as the Rose City, it planted a Portland Envoy Rosebush in that spot. The city referred to it by a different name. The city tried to give it the name of Envoy Park. Oh, really? Never knew that. That was news to me. Fagan wasn't having it, writing in his column the next day that officials have the temerity, meaning audacity, to claim that this plot of land is Portland Envoy Park instead of Mill Ends Park, by which name it has been known for low these many years. I can see where dad would just say, hey. That's not gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like over my dead body, you're gonna rename that park. That's gonna be Mill Ends Park. The name stuck and it became a regular feature in his column. On one hand, it was a mini rose garden. On the other, a fantasy land home to a resident leprechaun named Patrick O'Toole. He talked to the leprechauns. And He's the only one that did. Yeah, good. And just like the whimsical and obscure nature of his column, so were the events that took place in and around the park. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Cowboys planted a Texas yellow rose there. A miniature Ferris wheel was lowered on the park by a real crane. And then there were the annual snail races. Dad would come home and he'd go and get mom's good china. That's right, snail races. And they happened on St. Patrick's Day. Who knew sometimes what went on in his mind? On April 23rd, 1968, Fagan's column took a more serious tone. In it, he wrote, I have cancer in the upper left lung. He worked and wrote the column for as long as he could. Fagan would continue writing his Millland's column until his death in 1969. We lost him too early. I think it was too early for Portland too. I mean, he had a lot more he could have made them laugh about and smile. The day after Fagan passed away, the paper printed this cartoon letting their readers know. A leprechaun sitting in Millland's Park with his head hanging down, holding a shamrock. I don't think he ever imagined that it would become what it has. I think I would have brought a smile to his face because this wasn't just leaving us a legacy as a family. This. This is to the people he loved and the, pe the city he loved. All right, so a couple more things to wrap this story up. If you're wondering what a mill end is, well, it's the rough ends of lumber cut off during the milling process. And a couple dates here. In 1971, the Guinness Book of World Records recognized mill ends as the world's smallest park. And in 1976, and appropriately enough on St. Patrick's Day, the city officially became the owners of this park. And every year on St. Patrick's Day, the family actually gathers here at the park to honor their dad, the park that he helped create and build. And that's exactly where they'll be this coming Sunday.